excellent day for an exorcism. Welcome to Just Another Horror Podcast. Dumb men calling every Russian a bigger coming. I'm John. I worked at Burger King and I got some problems with his bullshit. I'm Cobra. It's funny that you both like really <laughs> shitty movies. Hello. Welcome to Just Another Horror Podcast. I am John. I am Ben. I am Cobra. And this is uh, Ben's pick for the uh, weird, obscure slashers. He picked Pledge Night. Any reason, Ben? It was easy to find. Uh, it was obscure. I kind of scrolled through it. I saw a bunch of titties, and I knew Cobra wouldn't mind it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's... I'm always looking out for you. Yeah, there's a... There's... More nudity at the end of this movie than there is in most movies throughout. Now, I did, uh, was texting back and forth, uh, last night, and, uh, I was asking Cobra to the, have we seen a movie that had titties in the last two to three minutes? He quickly replied, they live. Reanimator. And I told him, and I told him I would never underestimate his knowledge of gratuitous I mean, he <laughs> is, his... Little sideshow, I mean. <laughs> it's got like an encyclopedic knowledge of it. My brain works in mysterious ways. Robin must be proud. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It was college fraternity and slasher, and I just thought that sounded fun, so. But, uh, John, you already said you, you didn't really like it that much and uh, I said that I thought that this movie, whoever wrote it, I think they started I think they wanted to make a comedy and then they realized it wasn't working or something wasn't working and the next easiest thing to do is a horror film, so. Yeah. They, they listed this as a comedy and a horror on IMDb. So, I feel like, but the thing is for me, anyway, the comedy didn't land. No. Like, at all. Maybe they felt the same Actually, way, so... The next movie we're going to be talking about, uh, the comedy lands in that movie. I'm not sure, but, like, some of that, but yeah, we'll get to that, but... <laughs> but, no, I agree, the comedy here just, I don't know, they were trying too hard to be, I think Cobra said, like, Revenge of the Nerds, or... Animal um, House. Animal House. They're uh, literally lifting oh God, scenes and lines from Animal House. Uh, well, I can't say Pledge Night without wanting to scream Pledge Pin from Animal House. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it also <laughs> reminded me if, if uh, oh my God, I didn't even know if you could get through it. There was a movie called King Frat from the <laughs> 80s. <laughs> what? And it's a total... It might be late 70s. It might be, like, really jumping on the college fraternity movies right after Animal House. But uh, it's there's, like, a farting contest. And a guy puts a, <laughs> a, a funnel that you would, like, pour, like, um, oil or something in. He puts that up his butt because he thinks it's going to have a louder effect and it makes him shit himself. It. It's the most insane, <laughs> crazy movie. <laughs> I don't want to watch that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I there was a whole it. bunch yeah, of those college uh, fraternity movies back in the day. Uh, what, is, what is college fraternity's obsession with each other's asses? That's what I want to know. I have written on I have so many times written in my notes, uh, yep, fraternity, like, this doesn't even remotely appeal. Why would anybody want to do this? Yeah. Yep. It looks super gay. <laughs> when you're not raping women, I suppose. Ooh. That's how you prove yeah. you're not gay. You rape women, and then you go back to touching each other's asses. <laughs> right? Jesus Christ. They're real insistent in this movie, though, that, like, if you want to become a congressman or somebody that has anything to do with government. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a stretch, but. You mean a president? No, I meant, like, the whole congress, you know, people would be in 
in politics or CEOs, like those are like the big schools, like Yale, Harvard, Princeton, like Skull, the and Skull and Bones. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Can you hear that in the background? Yeah. What is that? What are you jerking it's off? My washer spinning out. That's fine. Washer spinning out. It's fine. Has okay. the lid lifted by itself recently? What? Has the lid lifted by itself recently? No, not recently. Just that last time I was telling you guys. It's because you called him out. He's like, I better lay low for a while. No, I will, uh, I will always uh, keep you guys apprised uh, on my uh, ghostly experiences in this house. So, so um, this movie takes a really long time to get to horror. 40, 40 minutes. Yeah. In the meantime, it mostly consists of scene after scene of Hell Week, which or all these different pranks that the frat is pulling on the new recruits or whatever you would call them, pledges or whatever. And um, I'm bored, so I'm going to let you guys <laughs> describe. Well, there's a bunch of pledges, and you're bombarded with a bunch of names. So most of the time I just have pledges. But there's one who's a townie. Bonner. Yeah, he's the main guy, is what I assume. He, yeah, it's... he kind of turns into the main... Bonner is his name, or at least his last name, I think. But uh, yeah, last name. You know, you know he's the lead because they have a scene with him outside of the fraternity. He's the only person See, that they have a scene outside of the fraternity with. I that's feel like that was shot happening. later mm -hmm. when they wanted to make it a horror film. Yep. Yeah. And, and then, so he had to have a reason why it was why something scary was going to happen, and so uh, Bonner's mother. We have a scene where, um, what is it? It's it's Hell Week, or they have to stay at the house for three nights before initiation, and uh, they're told to you know go pack their bags, and come back. So Larry goes home. We see we see him cutting the smallest stack of firewood. <laughs> yep. And he can't. <laughs> he could for some reason, for some reason this is going to take him a long time, and he'll get the rest of it. You know when he gets back from Hell Week. And uh, but his mother hints she doesn't want him to pledge, and that she t oh she doesn't tell him here that somebody died in that house. She it's, does, but she says it, it was it wasn't on purpose, but it did happen. That's what that, she says. Yeah, that's what it was. She Isn't comes to visit him later, which he never says. Hmm. Is that his dad? I think that's that's what uh, it's I hinting. Think, yeah. Yeah, I think and it's he's his never dad. come out and say it. She's like this guy I was dating. Before you were born, at this frat party, and they mentioned something yeah, about later he's he's like I did it to protect you or something. It I was, was like, shut down a little bit before he was born, so and he, that was her boyfriend. So it, it, the timing lines up for that, yeah. Yeah, because that was twenty years, years before. Mm -hmm. So he would be nineteen ish. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's his dad, because he also throws down a line that, I think I was born at Woodlock, or something like that. Yeah, there's just, uh, they put they put little bits and pieces in here to hint that that's his dad. That's one of them. Yeah, that's... They're like, they used to do that back in the day, and they still do that well, now. His, <laughs> so so his, uh, his zombie dad tried to rape his prospective girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think he says something along the lines of... Uh, if it feels good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's play the protest. So, yeah, the first 40 minutes is uh, hijinks and antics and initiation and... Um, Titties. They, they, throw, they throw a pig party where they, I guess, they only invite ugly women. Uh, upwards of 60 years old, that, that stripper. Uh, yeah. Not, she... not sure how... Oh. So they got an old woman <laughs> stripping and a bunch of high school kids. Be yes. Yeah. And then two of the pledges <laughs> go back with so, the who, who, so the, 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 the fraternity brothers that are in charge, they basically tell this girl she has to have a threesome with these two pledges. Like, in, in the boom the room. room. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. Like, um, but yeah, it's slow. 
Um, Can you plug sexual healing there? Of all the songs <laughs> that you want to <laughs> plug right there. <laughs> We also see Bonner, uh, he's talking with one of his fraternity brother's girlfriends? Wendy. Am I right? She's also a sister for uh, sorority. I, mm -hmm. I don't know how it all works, but... He's the nicest character in the movie. It, it, her name's Wendy. That's like one of the few characters' names that I picked up on. All right. Yeah, so, way yeah. to go. Well, she tells Bonner that because there's this running gag that there's a psychotic Man. fraternity brother named Dan. Mm -hmm. He's got a brain tumor, and so they let him stay there. brain tumor, and we hear him cackling and giggling a lot off Which camera. Which is hilarious, though. <laughs> After he uh, goes, we have a fake Dan freaking out and stabbing another fraternity brother. They're told not to call the cops. It's all a prank, but it doesn't play out. It's not funny. <laughs> then there's Cherry no. Butt Race and then there's Fear Factor. Yeah, somebody eats and a worm. Yeah, so, I mean, there's like a Fear Factor. They, I mean, they, they, the dumbest pranks that yeah. you would ever... I'm gonna tell you something about me, Joe Rogan, that you might not know. I smoke rocks. Bonner's mom shows up at the fraternity house and uh, this is where she tells him the story of Acid Sid. You might want to cut that, John. All right, cut, cut no, all no, of that, John. That's no fine. one listens to the show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I'm always worried that, like, one time I'm going to be like, who the fuck listens? And somebody's going to listen to the wrong thing, and it's all going to be over. <laughs> so, how f funny that Acid Sid gets fried by acid with, what was it? Uh, uh, a, a safe mixture of cornflakes and... Coffee grind, vinegar. How? Someone put... How? Some kind of acid in it. <laughs> the bottle said acid on it. What's it doing? Who has it? Where'd they get it from? Why is it down there? What is happening? <laughs> and why are you like, oh, shit. Oh, well. <laughs> Jump in anyway. <laughs> Did you catch the two toilets beside each other? What? <laughs> One had a demon hand in it, and one didn't. Pick the wrong one, man. So yeah, uh, like we've said, this is about 40 to 45 minutes before you even see Acid Sid. When it takes even longer because it's not him at first. In all fairness, Dan is killing people. Mm -hmm. Dan starts going insane and actually killing people, so you're like, maybe it's his brain tumor for like a second. They don't, they don't explain that at all. He just rips out a Dan. A is Dan he possessed? Dan wasn't even the one shitting on the toilet. Is he possessed? <laughs> no, okay. No, okay, so the guy that's shitting on the toilet is not Dan. It's the blonde guy that's got the hair. He looks almost European. He's so looking, at like a, looking at a magazine, yep. and you see a hand reaching up. And then all of a sudden, like five minutes later, Dan's possessed, killing people. But I don't know what the connection between the guy shitting on the toilet was and how it got into Dan. Bad editing. Who, Bad editing. Whose body did Acid Sid uh, come up through? He came through Dan's body. Yeah. But okay, Dan so, wasn't yeah. one sitting on the toilet with the demon hand coming no, out. No, he killed him. that guy, gave the peace sign, then yeah. went into Dan yeah. and started I murdering right. people. I think he's, I think he's uh, possessing Dan. Oh, Jesus Christ. Where's the protest? That's what he kept saying. Yeah. I loved how he was like half metal, half hippie. Yeah. <laughs> Anthrax. Can you plug in the Anthrax? <laughs> Look, I love the um, fog machine, uh, dry ice effects coming out of like uh, Sid's pant legs, and oh. every time he'd walk, he'd get like a puff of puff of smoke. Was he? Uh, good, the of this movie. Was he the kind of villain you would want to see again? No, I don't not. think so. Yeah, because the last twenty minutes he walks around that house. Oh my and god! You're like, Jesus Christ, can you get to somebody? <laughs> yeah. He literally walks up and down hallways, looks in rooms, finds well, nothing, 
Holy shit. And they're, uh, it's got like a voice modulation for his voice. It's uh, very deep, rumbly. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, his laugh is kind of cackly. We want a Brad Dorif in Exorcist 3. Wait, you, you want that? Did you say to plug that? No, I said his voice <laughs> is oh, the complete man. opposite. Oh, yeah, so okay. Brad Dorif's voice sits in the Exorcist 3. I'm like, why would you want that? <laughs> Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, Weaver. <laughs> um, oh, before Dan... Uh, is, is Dan possessed when he gets pretty rapey on that girl? Yeah. Yeah, because he kills her, right? Yeah, yeah. She was no, into that too. Hanging out nude the rest of the movie in the kitchen. Oh, she was into that though. Yeah, she, her only protest was that there might be somebody coming. Other than that, she was like yep. totally into it. Yeah, problem was it wasn't her. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, why didn't Sid just wipe everybody out when he had them all in that room? Likes to play games with them. That's what all these freaking serial I, killers do, especially the ones that talk. They take for fucking ever. Andy just disappears sometimes, reappears. The choreography <laughs> fights in this movie are stunning. The bat and sword fight is, is... horrifically bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's play tonight, though. What do you expect? Yeah. So, yeah, like you, I, yeah, like you said, it's a lot of just wandering through the house, uh, trying to avoid Sid. This is a case where the pacing is clearly bad because there's enough murders in this movie. You can space them out and make this a more enjoyable Since movie. I tell it that's another reason I think they switched halfway through what the movie was supposed to be. Um, yeah, you could have easily had somebody just knocking them off and in a Black Christmas sort of way in a fraternity house, sorority house. Um, I mean, they made a whole movie doing that like i know you don't want to rip something off but all slashers are basically rip offs i mean really I yeah mean... Uh, I mean, but uh it's just it's just, when it turns though it's just so bad it's out of nowhere because you spent 40 minutes watching these people just do dumbass things that are realistic and then a demon yeah. comes flying out of some dude's chest yeah i expected dan to just go slash someone to be slashed yeah with you I but thought no, there was a fucking demon. I thought maybe it'd be the mom, or then when Dan started doing it, and then yeah, there's a dude coming out of the toilet, out of people's fucking chests. It's fucking crazy. This Ben, you're right on. This has to be a case of like, this is a fucking disaster. We have to do something else, and then they just That's jam right. pack it, like. Yep. And then they don't have enough material for that. They're like, let's have some kills, and then they're like. Well, now what? So they have him walk around for 20 minutes. Yeah. All through the house were Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer fucking poster. Yeah. <laughs> I do have that. Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. And they hear the lamentation of the women. What did Sid... He killed one of the pledges and said that's for Spiro Agnew. <laughs> Does he like Spiro Agnew? I, uh... Is that because Spiro Agnew existed? Is that why he did it? I don't, I don't know, because like if you're a hippie, you wouldn't have liked right. Nixon and Agnew. Yeah. And Agnew was probably the most corrupt politician ever. My guess is it's because he said something about not liking all of these assholes for being... I can't remember what word he used to describe them, but basically like just corrupt assholes, just rich, well, shitty... Well, that's what I guess you know. Bonner did say that whatever percentage of politicians, congressmen, senators, um, CEOs were in fraternities. And that's why his and, mom was like, "Well, that's why we're in such a shitty situation right now." Yeah. So, and so Sid probably would hate the man. So, yeah. You know. So I'm gonna be talking political with you, Ben. That well, it was for me. I thought. Movie. I thought that you know, looking at this movie just far away, it seems like something I would like. But this guy's not likable. <laughs> Why not? He's just, he's throwing out these bad one-liners. Where's the protest? Yeah, like that, over and over again. I don't know. Uh, and then he's like, he's like a hippie who's raping women. <laughs> so... Did you like the, dare I say, homage to uh, Videodrome? Well, what was that? Oh, right. 
Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> I was hoping for, like, his head to be, like... Chopped off by the stomach or something. Yeah, Pop, like, flops around or something. Yeah, just basically just had goo on it. And yeah. We, lack of budget, obviously. Well, they probably didn't realize they were going to have to have a budget for horror effects, so... <laughs> Hey, some of them uh, eh, yeah. They were fine. So, Bonner and Wendy are basically the, the final two, and Wendy hits them with that fire extinguisher and it freezes them for some unknown reason. Why did Bonner leave her in the house by herself? Why wouldn't they have just left? <laughs> I kept asking that a lot. Why aren't these people just <laughs> fucking leaving? Yeah, just just go. Just keep, you know. It's a haunted running. house. The ghost in it haunts the house. Leave. But here's yeah. another question that I have. If you're a, uh, a ghost that haunts the house, right, in this universe, ghosts exist, right? So, and they exist in this movie from untimely, sudden deaths, right? So now this guy is going to have to spend the rest of his fucking eternity with all these fucking people that he murdered, presumably. Yeah, but he's more of a demon, so he's gonna have control over them. I bet. What are they? Are they just gonna spend eternity fucking carrying cherries around in their ghost asses now? He might make them. <laughs> <laughs> First one to drop them, eat them. Um, First of all, if I would have won that match, and you made me eat the cherries because I didn't say something, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I want. If I lose, I'll eat the butt cherries. But if I want, no butt cherries. Because <laughs> you have no loyalty, Lambert. Neither do I they. Do. They made rules and then they broke the rules. <laughs> Fuck them. But I want. If I win, I win. Yeah. Don't don't tell me I lost after I won. Uh, yeah, fraternities just don't look fun. After Sid gets frozen, he does come back. He and gets a sword shoved in his throat too, which does nothing. So no, it doesn't. And then, but he comes back, and then this is where he gets a little rapey with Wendy. Yeah, that's when. This and is then, when he says that line. If it feels yeah. good, and then starts trying to rape her. And then Bonner comes in, and then he says, "I came because they, they ask him why he came back now." Yeah, he and tells him who he well, is. Sid keeps, Sid keeps asking everybody, "Who are you?" Mm-hmm. And just killing them. And then he asks Bonner who he is, and he finds out who he is, and that's when he says, I came back for you. So it's like, yeah, that's his dad. Absolutely. Yep. Still makes no sense. I um, I don't feel good about that. Like, if I knew my dad was trying to rape my potential girlfriend, I would not feel great. <laughs> so. Also, after they leave, we get ex-boyfriend of Wendy who's sleeping with another girl and Sid is still in the house whose house is? are is they this? in that house did this guy go back to the house would it be a crime scene like, he, well he claimed wrong. that he claimed Wendy went crazy which would indicate nobody believed the bodies were there or something I don't know or did Wendy get Wendy and Bonner get blamed that could be. I mean, what are you going to do? Say a ghost did it? You're kind of, I feel bad for... I was thinking about this the other day when it came to slasher movies. I feel bad for the survivors of a lot of them because trying to explain to the cops that, like, let's say you're in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. All of your friends died because a dream demon killed them. <laughs> or Friday the 13th, all your friends died because a boy that drowned there 50 years ago came out of the lake and killed them. Like, it's not going to... Yeah, it's not going to fly. Um, yeah, and, I mean, the, yeah, you get the last two kills, get boobs. But you really, left. you really don't get the last two because he just stands under the bed with a sword and it goes to credits. Yeah, he's gonna... Yeah. <laughs> so... <sighs> he have a yeah, that's right, he does. <laughs> Man, and I, 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 at first, you know, I'm not up to my... I'm not up to date on my hippie lingo, so I kept waiting him for to say for him to say out of sight, out of mind, and I was like, that doesn't make sense. Then I'm like, oh, out of, like that, that doesn't make sense either. 
So, <laughs> so I have I have a quote here. Did Sid call Wendy a cock tease? Yes, yes he did. <laughs> okay, yeah, I had that doubt. I'm like, wait, did he call her that? Wow, he did. <laughs> oh boy, who who wants to go first? Uh, since it's my pick, I'll I'll go first. Uh, okay. Uh, we've we've discussed numerous times already that uh, pacing issues. Um, my firm belief that this did not start out as a horror film. Um, I kind of had fun watching this. Uh, I didn't think that like I liked the characters, like even the guys. I mean, they, I guess the two head fraternity brothers were you know assholes. But the pledges, I thought, all were, like, decent characters. You didn't hate hate them. Um, that's rare in movies today. You hate everybody. Um, some of the kills were pretty fun. I did think that, like, the head and the belly. I wish they would have had a bigger budget to, with more gore effects and stuff like that. And you could have done something a lot better. Um, perfect gratuitous nudity. So, you know. Uh... And some of Acid said look good. <laughs> like, uh, like I said, I like that. I I'm a sucker for fog machine or um, dry ice. But uh, and then yeah, I have last question. But we've already talked about it with Sid Bonner's father. Agreed, he is. Um, I mean, it's five out of ten for me. Whoa. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what do you got, Cobra? I also have a five out of ten. <laughs> fine, it's absolutely fine. It, yeah. It's a little slow at the beginning and the end, but it's a demon comes out of somebody, and you're expecting like this crazy slasher. So it's and it's got boobs every ten to fifteen minutes, just like you need. It's a distraction because the plot's not good. The acting's okay. I didn't care for the characters, but it was entertaining. I had fun I watching it. It was fun. I thought, the one pledge looked like, I thought the one pledge looked like, um, who's that, uh, who's that comedian from the 90s? Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer, yeah. Okay, yeah. The guy with the mullet. From Half-Baked. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I disagree. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no, I won't go terrible. I'll give it a th- Three. <laughs> um, not my kind of movie. Um, I, this this is a great example of um, if you wanted to show people the power of editing, this movie sorely needed an editor. Uh, like they had. Here's the thing: they had a complete movie filmed, even though they started with one thing and ended with another. It still had a through line, but man. It was just so sloppily put together. Like, like you can have these these sporadic kills throughout. A good example would be, um, what's the one with the Driller Killer? There's like a series Driller of killer? Them. Slumber, uh, party Slumber Party Massacre. Oh, Slumber party. Massacre. Like, the whole movie takes place in a house with sorority girls. And they fill the whole movie with, like, kills. And, at, like, it takes a while for them to realize people are dying. They still go through the normal shit that they're doing. That could have happened here. You could have, like, maybe killed somebody, one of the sorority girls that were there helping cook or something off campus or off the, the fraternity or something, or killed them in a room that nobody goes in or, or something like that. The problem is that they just smash all these kills together. And here's the thing. If you're watching this thing for 40 minutes and, and there's nothing... And then you start being lazy, like the, sh- the host of this show happens to be. Um, you might miss the most exciting part of the movie when a demon pops out of a guy's chest. You missed that? I went back. <laughs> because I was like, what the, where's this guy come from? And I come back and I see that and I'm like, and it takes what, like 15 seconds? That scene is 15 seconds. Yep. I'm watching this for 40 minutes, I miss 15 seconds, and I'm in a different movie, and I don't know how I got there. So... <laughs> See, I, thought, I thought that looked 
Did you think that looked good, though? Yes. Him coming out of the body? It did. So it did. They, that looks good, but then there's other things that it's like, oh, it's lack of budget. Like that, They cut away from a lot of the kills, and I think, like, for instance, um, not that I wanted this, but they stuck a firecracker oh, yeah. in a guy's ass, <laughs> and they lit it on fire, and then they cut away and have the explosion. Which is an effective way to handle not having a budget, so I'll give him credit on that. I thought you were going to talk about the, um, the, when Dan goes crazy with the mixer, and... Well, that's the thing, having Dan establish... You know what? I'm going to bump this to a four. They establish that Dan is crazy and laughing all the time, so they can cut away from these kills and have him freaking out, and you know these kills are happening without having to be there because of the lack of the budget. So... I guess the way that they managed to pull that off, I'll bump it a point. <laughs> I'll give it a four. I just didn't... I didn't enjoy it. It was... Get, getting pretty close to a five there. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go there. Like, <laughs> my problem is, with as far as the, the nudity goes, it's almost always a rape <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. Almost always. The only time it's not oh. is still a woman being they... handcuffed to some... Or... I mean, even in the case of the guy, or the, the threesome, the girl is being forced to have a threesome. Yeah. She's she's on board, yeah, but it, just it feels uncomfortable. Like, well, I always thought like fraternities her. feel uncomfortable anyway, so. It looked like she wanted it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Why would... I can't go five because I feel like if I'm giving it a five, I'm telling people to search this out, and I don't know that you want to. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing you had never heard of this movie ever. I, I mean, I hadn't. No. I well, was that was that was the point of this whole project. So. Yeah, it's just I told my girlfriend I would rather watch Pledge Night than It Follows. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a strong opinion. <laughs> it's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you want to get a hold of us, facebook.com backslash horrorcasting, horrorcastings at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at horrorcasting. We are on Spotify, YouTube, and Podbean. Screw me. <laughs>